there are two types of T cells and this isn't really superbly important but it is yeah, some interesting to know if you ever do lab work so it's natural killer cells we don't have a way of actually identifying what they look like when you look at them in the lab and you uh, go under the microscope you can't tell the difference between a natural killer cell a B cell and a T cell um, they're all very 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 structurally similar but even if we were to go smaller at say like the level of electron micrographs and, and the level of proteins they all seem to express some unknown thing known as CD56. Nobody knows what CD56 does, but for most immunologists, this is the defining factor of a natural killer cell. So there's CD56 that have it known as CD56 dim and CD56 bright. The dim means that they don't have a lot of it. The bright means that they do have a lot of it. Um, the bright is a immature form of this, whereas the dim is the fully developed form. Um, some people also hypothesize that these are actually just two subclasses of natural killer cells. But anyways, the ones that are dim are the ones that are mostly involved in the killing part. But what's interesting about the ones that are bright is these ones, for example, um, they, they play a role in healing and growth factors. Healing slash growth factors. We don't really talk about the immune system playing a role in tissue regeneration, but it, it, it really does because it's, that's one of the parts we need to do after we have an infection. Um, an example of this that's very well known would be the natural killer cells of the uterus. So these are not natural killer cells that are designed to kill things with inflammation and, and uh, cytotoxic granzymes, but they're designed to secrete growth factors that will make um, the they will provide a, a, a highly vascularized environment for the developing fetus, or in this context, I guess it would just be uh, the trophoblast, which would be developing, and then through the inner cell mass. But anyways, um, th those are the two types of, of natural killer cells that we've identified thus far. I'm going to clear that off, and then I'm going to talk about uh, what they actually do as opposed to what their, their names are. So, what natural killer cells do is they're going to kill any viral or people don't talk about this much we haven't talked about this much cancer infected cell anything that has that rogue MHC protein or anything that just doesn't look like it's this doesn't look right so this is kind of different because unlike with pathogens like a bacteria there's no doubt in our mind whether or not this is a healthy cell, whether that's something that's not supposed to be there. But with this, this is these are your cells, these are my cells. So we need to have be very, very precise and very, very sure about how we go about doing this. So because of this, um, the decisions that make whether or not natural killer cells decide to kill, so I'm just going to say killing, is dependent on many things many factors come into play when natural s killer cells decide to kill your own cells. So it's not just one thing that's going to cause that decision there. Um, kind of go along, going along the lines of making sure that we're not killing uh, any cells that don't need to be, they do this one cell at a time, one cell at a time. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just write it up here that they do this at very close range. They do not just spray and pray. They're, they're very accurate in the way that they do this. So I'm just going to say that they're always off. And the, the activation has to require a lot of activation molecules or activation signal peptides that are going to make them turn on. The thing is they're patrolling the areas. And whenever they get activated to come to the site, whether that be through chemokines or whatever, they they kind of act in a similar way to that of the neutrophils in that they have integrins on their surface. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and write this down here, that they have integrins. So as they're rolling around, and I'll just see if I can, I'm not going to draw it, I'm horrible at drawing, but if you could just imagine, oh, I guess I'll, this is not going to end well, is it, Robert? So there's a bunch of cells here, say this is the epithelia, and you have, you have the flu, so uh, there's all the receptors there. You have yourself a natural killer cell that's just rolling around and it's got these integrins here. And he's going to be just bouncing this forward direction, rolling, 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 rolling. So let's say that as he's rolling, 
uh, he comes across a rogue looking protein or a protein that doesn't look like it's supposed to be there. And that's what we're going to talk about, what's going to happen there. So he's rolling here and he makes contacts with that. So we have integrins that are involved with this process of kind of scanning everything one and at a time. Um, and as it's rolling, these integrins are going to tell it whether or not the cell is healthy or not healthy. And, and I've represented that with the magenta, so I'll go ahead and just circle this in the magenta. If the cell is healthy, he's just going to keep going. Uh, but if the cell is not healthy, it's going to form something known as a synapse. So let's just draw what would happen over here to the best of my seventh grade art class skills here. So he forms a synapse and what a synapse is is where all the receptor molecules, the receptor proteins on this natural killer cell are going to migrate to the site of this cell surface and by the same notion this cell is going to migrate all of the ligands for those receptors to the site of this synapse. And at the synapse, it's kind of this tug of war, if you could think of it, type of situation between signals that are telling it to kill the cell and signals that are telling it not to kill the cell. So if the, the synapse we have, I'll just go ahead and branch these off here, a war, a tug of war going on between activation and inhibition signals. So if the activation signals uh, are going to win, that's going to activate... <laughs> the uh, natural killer cells and then the the possibly the unhealthy cell is ultimately going to die. Well, if we're successful it'll die. If the inhibition cells win, then the cell will live. Alright, cool. So let's talk about what's going to happen if the activation signals win and we've decided that the cell is actually going to die. So what's going to happen is the synapse is going to get stronger, it's going to recruit more proteins to this site and it's also going to strengthen the bond through a conformational change with the integrins. Remember integrin interactions are kind of weak at first but after the things get activated they become very very strong. So they're kind of like holding him down in place so that he can't he can't go anywhere. I don't know where he would go. It's not like they have legs but uh, uh, what we're going to do now after that though is this natural killer cell is going to reorganize basically his entire intracellular components. He's going to move through the use of microtubules and the centrioles are going to start to migrate to other ends of the cell. The Golgi complex is going to migrate to this end here. Everything is going to come over and place itself on top of this cell. So I'm going to just go ahead and write this up here that the intracellular components are going to rearrange. So this intracellular reorganizing that we have here um, just some examples of this would be the centrioles, which uh, the centrioles form the microtubule organizing center, which I'm just going to say MT for microtubules, not mitochondria, microtubules. I'm saying that like 20 times. Um, the entire parts of the endomembrane system are going to kind of rearrange themselves on top of this, the Golgi complex, the rough ER, so that we're going to have this all these proteins that we're about to just essentially like a uh, dropping a bomb or a payload right on top of this cell. And that's exactly what's going to happen is we're going to we're going to drop a proverbial bomb. And what is that bomb made out of? Well, the bomb is made out of granzymes and lytic granules and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's granzymes is one that's kind of the primary thing that we have. We also have other types of granules as well. Both of these guys are going to ultimately result in destroying the membrane, but uh, apoptosis is the main. Apoptosis of this cell here. So he's going to die because he's been given that activation signal to do so. So that's how natural killer cells work. That's how they, they scan um, for infected cells or, or cancer cells or cells that are just not healthy. Um, this, the use of the synapse is what I, I really like about it because it's such close range and we make sure that we're not killing our own cells. This is again, this distinction between self and non-self is so powerful.